Um, two other little things to finish up. We, the Obesity Action Coalition, I think it's really important that we empower uh, patients, families, our fellow staff to be a part of the OAC, uh, to, to, to get obesity treated as a disease uh, and fairly. Uh, the nurses union here I think actually can do a lot for your fellow employees uh, to make Peace Health follow evidence because right now uh, the coverage is not even up to the 1991 evidence which was very very old and very very expert opinion evidence the newest the newer evidence uh, if we covered here like we say we cover other diseases it would be a very different and I think the nurses union really has a lot of pull not in the next contract negotiation but right now to say you guys need to change how you how you distribute insurance you know it, all, it doesn't take a contract for them to for them to make that change and I think the nurses have a lot of power as we see the patients coming through it's it's unfair to me that a staff person here would have better access to care if they were disabled on Medicare that's not really that's pretty sad when it's Medicare sad. when Medicare is following the evidence better than a hospital system. That is the truth. If you if you if you have a BMI of 40 and you're disabled on Medicare, there are half a dozen centers of excellence in Seattle that can take care of you tomorrow. If you have a BMI of 40, you get no operation at all in, as an employee here. You have to have BMI of 45. All right. So enough on the evidence. I do want to talk briefly. Also, we do worry about these <laughs> folks. What's that? She said that's her goal now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the BMI today. the BMI evidence is actually going to 30, uh, and 35 with even in 1991 evidence was BMI of 35 with a comorbidity or 40 with no comorbidity, and Peace Health I think demands a BMI of 45 and two comorbidities. Wow. So the last thing about liability, this being an elective procedure and being an operation that happens sometimes on young women who are working mothers and the crux of their family, there is always concern about liability. Um, there's not necessarily higher risk like we talked about than any other procedure, but when something happens, since it's so bigoted in society, it can be viewed as why did they ever have that surgery? I, I've, I've luckily been clear and have, don't know of many lawsuits, but when people are upset, I just want to say that general word about liability, when people are at their worst, it's actually when we need to bring them closer. We need to provide more care. We need to listen to them harder. We need to make sure we understand. Because a lot of times they're trying to tell us what they're mad about, and they just want to be listened to as much as anything. So just bear that in mind that sometimes the people who are being, it's not that often, it's once or twice a year when somebody may be completely outrageous or leaving AMA or some, you know, something weird like that. Um, it's usually somebody who's actually six months out from surgery or a year out from surgery and these changes have disrupted their 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 life you know it's like winning the lottery you know six months later there are people who won the lottery and six months later they have no friends and their family won't talk to them and they're rich but they have no life and and that first year of change after weight loss surgery can be tricky that way people don't know how to deal with them sometimes or you know what i mean people can be threatened spouses can be threatened or definitely guys get jealous sometimes friends uh you know, can get jealous. There's a little bit of the frenemy stuff sometimes at work where people are, you know what I mean, snarky. So um, those are the folks who tend to come in with abdominal pain, smoke again, they've got an ulcer, and they can be tough, tough sometimes, but try to keep them close, try to listen to them. They're, what they're really usually sharing is their psychic pain and sometimes the anxiety that something is going wrong. So anyhow, any questions? I didn't leave time for much, but you guys were good asking through. Did I cover what you were hoping to cover today is my question to that you. Is so I, will this, you always yeah. be on call for these? Your, these I will be on call when I'm in town. Dr. Okay. Pietro will be backing me up when I'm out of town. Uh, we'll see who wants to, you know, cover and cross cover. I think Dr. Bachman has a real interest uh, in, in participating too. But, you know, we want to we wanna build slow and steady and make sure everybody is comfortable and we take it we sort of one step at a time. We'll do pathways and protocols. This is not going to be just me and my practice. Uh, other docs are probably going to be involved in this from down in uh, Edmonds and Bellevue, possibly. I don't know how that's going to work out. So it's not necessarily just me, but I'm the guy who lives here. So, uh, yeah, we, but it definitely order sets. I'm a big believer. Uh, you guys don't know me as well at this point in the year than the, the, the third floor nurses. But 
I like having things laid out. You can always scratch it off if you don't like it, but it's, it reminds you, you know, you forget less and uh, it's easier to read. And if we do it mostly the same way most of the time, you know, I, so I, I have a pre-printed order sheets from Duluth and most folks do, they have pathways. Um, do, you, do you operate here, you'll operate here and in other hospitals I'll operate well? here and at the PROSC, the Pacific Rim Surgery Center, okay. and possibly other places, maybe Skagit. I don't know. They have a strong desire in Skagit. A lot of folks to stay in Skagit, from what I hear. So we'll see where that goes. Um, that's that's down the line. I certainly think um, getting it going. This here. is capable. This is the this is the capable hospital here. We, uh, we do all the the big other stuff. There's no reason. This is not as you know big a undertaking as heart surgery or mm -hmm. brain surgery. So yeah. You already have like a post-op order set, yeah. We don't have them made here. I do. I've got them from Duluth. I, I don't have them on me, but uh, I can bring some by and we can we can hang them up. But it's it's not that different from general surge orders, except that except the diet advancement is very abbreviated, uh, and and there's just a little tighter call criteria. Um, you know, it's early ambulation, aggressive pain control. Uh, you know, SCDs and and. You know. uh, and you said ice chips. We had one doctor who was specific, you know, the, uh, the 30 no straws mils. Or, yeah. Yeah, 30, 30 mils of ice chips an hour would be. I, I, I usually about. say no more than, yeah, no more than that. Is, is for the first night, they should not do more than an ounce of ice an hour. Uh, on, and okay, and leave a small thing that. by the, you know, a yeah. small. Not, uh, our, not, our usual, not the usual like big one. Gun. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've never seen line. anybody, that being said, I've never seen anybody perforate from it, but boy, it scares you to death when you get, so, you know, <laughs> young guys, they're so dry and they just, uh -huh. you know, they just, they get a whole one down in an hour and you're thinking, what's going on in there? But usually, I, I haven't seen a problem from it, but it yeah. certainly scares me. Yeah, good question. The first surgery is when again? Um, Friday. Friday. This is a sleeve gastrectomy. Yeah. Ooh, we'll be here. <laughs> Excellent. I'll be on my phone all weekend. Maybe I, if I leave the floor. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, well thank you very much. So much Dr. <laughs>